In this episode of Tech Tips, we'll look at how to arrange your QAM channels for optimum system performance. First, we'll look at how people typically lay out their channel plan. Usually, you start with that CDC in the top left. That way, when you add modules later, if you need to, you don't have to rearrange everything. Typically, people will start and look at their first two channels in that next module to the right, work their way from left to right, and then top to bottom. So you'll see this is what an example of that typical layout looks like. Now we'll look at our recommendation, why it's optimum, and how it builds in tilt. Note that this is only the QAM output, not the satellite input, which still follows the typical layout. So you'll see here what we do differently is instead of going left to right, top to bottom, we go top to bottom, then left to right. Whereas before, we started to the right of the CDC, because we're going the other direction, now we start below it. Now because the insertion losses are greatest at the leftmost module and work their way down to zero at the rightmost module, you can see how this will build in tilt. We'll get into a little more detail on that later. And what do you do when the output is greater than 6 MHz? Skip channels. Now sometimes the input data rate from the satellite transponder is greater than will fit in a 6 MHz 256 QAM channel. Typically those will be about 6.4 or so MHz wide. You certainly don't want those next to each other with a 6 MHz channel plan because of co-channel interference. So the easy solution, if you have the spectrum, is just skip channels. And what do you do if you just don't have enough space to skip channels? Well, alternate your narrow and your wide. But be aware, there is a little bit of co-channel interference here which will reduce your carrier noise slightly. Now remember, 1024 QAM is even more sensitive, so keep your system as clean as you can, especially when it comes to ingress noise and reflections. So the recommendation for 1024 QAM channels is to have no immediately adjacent channels and raise the level by about 2 to 3 dB. Well, since most people don't fill up that last chassis, what do you do? Well, the idea is to keep the same approach of having the higher frequencies with lower insertion loss to keep that tilt. So whether you physically locate these TDTs in the last chassis to the right or not, that's how you want to arrange the channels. Either way, if you add modules later though, you'll need to rearrange some channels. Now here again, if you have the spectrum available, you can set up as though you have all the TDTs in place, but skip the channels that would be on the left. This would save you from having to rearrange everything later. It's all up to you. Don't forget about those all-important spares. Here's how. Much like we did in that last example, just set up your channel plan as though you had no spares, and then leave those channels muted. In this case, the TDTs with channels 31 and 32, and 23 and 24. Now the goal is to have fairly flat input into the receiver, but the coax has greater attenuation at the higher frequencies. So what does all this do for us? If you assume that every modulator had an output of 38 dBmV, and your levels are all set to 99, or no attenuation, and you further assume your worst case insertion loss of 1.5 dB everywhere, then this is what your spectrum would look like. As you can see, you have tilt built in. Now depending on your cable runs and amplification, and of course the actual output of the TDTs, this may be more tilt than you want. But in this case, you are minimizing the need for attenuation across the board. You also have the benefit of probably not needing to add tilt in your amplification. In a perfect world, attenuators and amplifiers won't add to the noise floor but in reality they all do. So the less you have to attenuate and amplify, the better off you are. Also, it's not critical to have everything perfectly flat going into the receiver, which is good since in most systems that's difficult to achieve, since you'll typically have different run lengths after your last amplifier, which would certainly change the tilt that each receiver would see. Most receivers will easily let you get away with 2 dB difference, so we recommend that you take this into account in your system design and just make sure that when you account for your system tilt, you allow for up to 2 dB of variation in your slope. Always confirm this against your receiver specs, though. One last point about amplifiers. Make sure you check the specs and tweak your input signal to the amp to be in that sweet spot. In other words, don't have the input to the amp too low or too high. Either case adds noise to the system. Well, those are the highlights of our recommendations. The intent is to provide you with a basic understanding and a foundation of the principles involved so that you can evaluate each of your systems and set up the best practical configuration. Remember, every system will be different and will likely require a little different configuration, 
So don't stress over perfection, just shoot for the best you can, and remember, there is some latitude here, and flat doesn't mean perfectly flat. Thanks for watching, we certainly hope you found this helpful, and as always, if you have any further questions, feel free to contact your Televez USA representative.